Hello and welcome to this lesson on density, which is part of the materials topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how to calculate the value of density. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we know the definition of density. We can calculate values of density and work out how we can just derive the value of density when it's estimated from the volume of a material, which falls into the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification 3.4.2.1 Bulk Properties of Solids, in particular density. So density is the amount of matter in the substance in a certain volume. So we can say density is how much mass of a material there is in a certain volume. So density can be thought of as a measure of the number of particles in a certain volume or a measure of the space between the particles in a certain volume. So you can think of density as a measure of how spread out the particles are in a unit volume. So we know that if an object is very dense, it must have lots of particles per unit volume. So that means there are small gaps on average between the particles in a substance. Now if an object is not very dense, then it has few particles per unit volume. So this means that there are large gaps on average between the particles in the substance. So density is the mass of a substance in a unit volume. And we can calculate density with the following equation. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. Now we tend to find that the standard units of density are kilograms per meter cubed. They are the SI derived units of density. When we measure mass in kilograms and volume in meters cubed. Now we can consider density to be the mass of of one cubic meter of a substance. So for example, gold has a density of 19,300 kilograms per meter cubed. So this means that if you have one meter cubed of gold, that would have a mass of 19,300 kilograms. Now let's just remember our equation for density, rho equals m over v. Now the unit of density can be written as either kilograms per meter cubed or kg m to the minus three. Now it's important to note that the unit of density can always be written as the unit of mass divided by the unit of volume. So for example, in this first question, if the unit of mass is grams, the unit of volume is meters cubed, density is grams per meter cubed. If the units of mass are in grams and volume is centimeters cubed, the density would be grams per centimeter cubed. If the unit of mass was kilograms and the volume was unit was millimeters cubed, the density unit would be kilograms per millimeter cubed. The next one, if the unit of mass was in kilograms and the unit of volume is in centimetres cubed, it will give you kilograms per centimetre cubed. If the unit of mass was in kilograms and the unit of volume was in metres cubed, the density unit will be kilograms per metre cubed. And finally, if the mass unit was in kilograms and the volume unit was in, ki in kilometres cubed, the density unit will be kilograms per kilometres cubed. So in density equations, you tend to find it's easier to change the unit to suit the existing mass and unit volumes as opposed to try and converting. Now, it's important to note that the unit of density depends on the units of mass and of volume used in the question. Use those to work out your units of density. Now, like we mentioned previously, Object's density links into their particles or their mass. An object is very dense if it has lots of particles per unit volume and not very dense if it has few particles per unit volume. So this shows the idea that solids have a higher density than liquids and gases because they have more particles per unit volume. Or you could say that they have a higher density because there is a smaller space between the particles per unit volume. Or you could say the idea that, it's, that solids have a higher density because the particles are closer together per unit volume. So we note that the gas has a low density, then a liquid, then a solid. Now technically, a vacuum has a density of zero kilograms per meters cubed as there are no particles in the volume at all on average. Now the density determines if an object floats or sinks. If an object has a higher density than the fluid it is in, it will sink. If an object has a lower density than the fluid it is in, it will float. Now it's important to note that water has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed and this can determine if a material will float or sink in water so because density has a den sorry water has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed that tells that one centimeter cubed of water has a mass of one gram so if we wanted to calculate the density of a substance you would write out your equation density equals mass over volume you would then you would then sub in your values for mass and volume you'd work out your answer working out the correct units 
with the correct number of significant figures. Now, if the shape is regular or symmetrical, we can find its volume by using one of the equations you use in mathematics. So, for example, the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 times by pi times by r cubed, where r is the radius of the object. Volume of a cube is l cubed, where l is the length of an object, and the volume of a cylinder is pi times by r squared times by h, where r is the radius of the object and h is the height of the object. So, what we can do is if it tells you what the shape is, is in a particular question the first thing you would do is you'd work out the volume of the object with that mathematical equation so if it's a sphere you do 4 over 3 pi r cubed you then use that as your volume and say density is mass over volume work out your answer to the correct number significant figures with the correct units now densities can be very useful to identify materials in the real world if you have an unknown solid substance in a material or object you can use the value of density to identify the material. Every solid material has the same density regardless of the object dimensions. So if you calculate the density of a solid material, you can work out what material that object is. So you would work out the density of an object and compare it to the list of known densities. So for example, every material okay, has the same density regardless of the object dimensions. So every object made of aluminium will always have a density of 2.64 grams per centimeter cubed regardless of the shape the object is in. Now we've got to be able to work out density for objects via experimental methods. And that can be either regularly shaped objects or irregular shaped objects. Now for both types of objects the object has its mass measured with a balance. Now for a symmetrical or regular shaped object what you must do is you must consider the symmetrical shape that has been produced. So when you consider that symmetrical shape such as a cube you will then take your measurements of that particular um, shape by using either a ruler, a screw gauge micrometer or a vernier caliper. So in this case because it's a cube we're going to measure the three lengths of the cube. We then use the mathematical equation associated with working out the volume for that shape. So for example volume is equal to length 1 times by length 2 times by length 3. Once we've calculated the volume we can take the mass measurement from the balance and then divide the mass by the volume to work out the density. Now again if we want to work out the density of an irregular shaped object we start by measuring the mass of the irregular shaped object with the balance. Now to find the density of an irregular shaped object we must determine its volume using a method called water displacement. That's, that's when you put the object into a measured amount of liquid such as water and measure how much that water level rises and the difference of that volume of the object, so the difference the level rises is the volume of the object and then we can measure the mass using the balance and use this to calculate the density of the object. So consider a beaker of water. If you place the measured object in this beaker of water, the object will displace its own volume of the water in the beaker. This will cause the water level to rise, and the volume with which the water level rises is the volume of the object. So the change in the water level of the liquid gives the volume of the object. Now you observe this effect in everyday life when you get into a bath or you put dishes into a sink full of water and the water level rises. So for example, if we had a beaker of water with 300 milliliters, we then place an object in it and the water level rose to 500 milliliters well the difference from 300 to 500 is 200 milliliters so therefore that is the volume of our object and if the mass of the object was measured with a balance with 200 grams well then we know the density is mass over volume it's 200 grams over 200 centimeters cubed the density is one gram per centimeter cubed now finally alloys must have their densities calculated slightly differently this is because alloys are a mixture of two or more metals so we can say that whilst the volume of a substance is not affected by the mixture of different particle types, the mass is affected. So we must consider the density of the different types of metals when we work out the density of the alloy. So for an alloy of volume V with two metals A and B, we can consider the volume of metal A to be volume A, VA, and the mass of A to be rho A, VA. Now where does that come from? That comes from the equation mass equals density times by volume. So the density of A is 
the sorry the mass of A is the density of A times by the volume of A. And we can do this for metal B as well. So if we consider the volume of metal B to be VB, the mass of B is going to therefore be the density of B times by the volume of B. We can then use this to work out the density of the alloy because density is equal to mass divided by volume. So therefore it is going to be the total mass divided by the total volume. So what you will do is you will work out the density of each um of each alloy, of each metal in the alloy you will add them together to get the total mass you then divide it by the total volume so remember v is the total volume of the alloy alloy whilst rho a time, times by v a plus rho b times by v b is the total mass of the two metals so let's look at this in terms of an example so brass is an alloy which consists of 3 uh, consists of 3.3 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed of copper and 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed of zinc what is the density of the brass if the density of copper is 8,900 kilograms per meter cubed and the density of zinc is 7,100 kilograms per meter cubed? Well, the first step you do is you work out the mass of each metal. So you do density times by volume for each of the metals and work out the mass of each of them. At this point, you can then work out the total mass of the two metals by adding them together. You can then work out the two well, the total volume of the air alloy by adding the volumes of the individual metals together because they are a mixture. So when you've worked out the total mass and you've worked out the total volume, you can then work out the density of the alloy by doing mass over volume. But please remember to work out the mass of the individual metals. You've got to multiply the volume of each metal times by the density of each metal. So you're getting your, den you're getting your density and multiplying it by your volume. Now, if we have learned in today's lesson, we should know what the definition of density is and be able to use the equation rho equals m over v. So if we've been successful in today's Today's lesson we should know the definition of density calculate values of density and know the value of density and how it can be estimated from the volume of a material so I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on density which is part of the materials topic in AQA A level physics thank you very much for listening and as always have a lovely day